Hi everybody, my name is Jack Pierce. I work as a solutions architect for DigitalOcean. So today I want to run you through how to configure some advanced load balancer settings on your Kubernetes cluster. This is actually the number one read article on our documentation site. So yeah, if you're wondering how to do this, you're in good company. I want to show you how to change the name of your load balancer once it's created by the Kubernetes cluster and how to apply some firewall rules to that load balancer as well in case you want to lock it down you're testing something you don't want um, access to that from the, the outside world so let's get started so for all of my examples i've got my commands um, in my clipboard ready to go i will you can pause the video if you want to take a look and dig into that so the first thing we're going to do is just create our kubernetes cluster uh, we can use that do that using the doctl uh, command line tool so I'm going to go ahead and create that now. Just very quickly describe what these flags are and how they work. So auto upgrade true. That means that during a maintenance window that we can provide, the DigitalOcean infrastructure will upgrade minor versions of your Kubernetes cluster for you. This is these are non-breaking, non-major versions. HA true means that we will enable the highly available master control plane. And this will give you an SLA on your control plane as well. We're setting the node pool size, the region, and we're setting surge upgrades to true. So with surge upgrades to true, what we'll do is we'll upgrade and we'll deploy new nodes into your cluster with the new updated versions. We'll then slowly drain your old nodes once your workloads are already moved across to those new droplets. This is free and we do this 10 nodes at a time depending on the, the size of your cluster. So let's go ahead and create that cluster. And once that's finished provisioning, uh, the DOCTL tool will automatically download the cube config file and switch context to this new cluster. So for this example, I'm just gonna run an Nginx pod and I've got an Nginx pod manifest that I created earlier. It's really simple. It just runs the latest version of the Nginx pod. I've also got a load balancer service that we're going to create. So the important things are here are that the app selector matches our Nginx pod that we just created, our target port and our type of load balancer. So when we set the type to load balancer, what this does is this instructs the DigitalOcean cloud controller to go and create a managed load balancer in DigitalOcean's infrastructure. Normally we would do that using the control panel or using the API. So we come into the control panel, we click on create. We want to do this from within the Kubernetes cluster because then the Kubernetes cluster will maintain ownership over that load balancer and it will reconcile any changes if we were to make them, try and make them. So let's come in here and apply both of our files. So we'll create the pod first and then we'll create the load balancer. And then if I do a get for my services, I'll see here that the load balancer has been created. The external IP is pending. That's because we just need to wait a little bit for the DigitalOcean um, infrastructure to create that load balancer. And if we come into our control panel, we'll see that this new load balancer is now being created in the back end. So we want to change the name of this load balancer. And normally what we would do is we would come in here, we would click on here and we would just type in our new name. But remember, we need to make these changes from within the Kubernetes um, cluster itself. And that's the same for any settings as well. So normally we would come in here and we would update these, uh, these settings straight from the control panel or using the API, but we need to use the Kubernetes cluster to make those changes. Okay, so the load balancer has now finished creating. We can see that in the control panel. And if we were to do get for our services, we can see that it's now got an external IP address I'm assigned to it. So if we curl that, we'll see that the Nginx pod responds as we would expect it to. So that's excellent. So the next thing we want to do, really common thing to, to do is just to rename the load balancer. At the moment, it's at this unique ID here. So it's an A followed by the unique ID. And we just want to change that so that we can identify this load balancer when we're looking at it in the control panel or when we're looking at it in the DOCTL uh, command line tool. Again, just as an example, this is how you would list your load balancers in your account. So you can see the, the IDs and the names here. So, that, so this could make it quite tricky just to identify the load balancer if you're just looking at this at this part here. So let's let's go into our load balancer manifest. And what we need to do is we need to find the correct 
annotation to add to this. So if we come into our documentation, we've got this page here, how to configure advanced load balancer settings in Kubernetes clusters. So we'll drop down, use this menu on the right, and we find the, the name. So what we need to do is we need to, under our metadata, we just need to add this annotation here. So we're just gonna copy this and we'll paste it here. So let's give it a new name of Nginx LB example, and we'll apply that. And then if we come into the control panel and refresh this page, we can see that this has now been uh, renamed as per, per our updated manifest. Another really common thing that you might want to do is apply a firewall to your load balancer so that you can only access it from certain IP addresses. So again, we'll come into here and we will go down to the firewall rules section and we can just copy the existing annotations that they've got as an example. So we'll just come in and we'll modify our load balancer service again. So we can see here that it's asking for a load balancer ID. Um, and then we can either apply a deny rule or an allow rule. So I'm just going to comment those out and I'm just going to obtain this uh, load balancer ID. So one way we can do that is by using the DOCTL command line tool. So if we run that again, we'll see our Nginx load balancer here. So here's its ID. Another way to get it is from the control panel. So when we browse to the control panel, we'll see the ID in the URL at the top. And the last way to get it is from the Kubernetes cluster itself. So if we do a describe on the service and we scroll up, we can see this uh, annotation here. So Kubernetes load balance ID. So let's just copy that and let's put that into our file. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create an allow rule that only allows um, an IP address that definitely isn't my workstation. So just to put that. And then we'll apply this load balancer again. And we will do a curl against the load balancer IP. And you can see that now it's just timing out because our firewall is blocking those requests. So I hope you found that video useful and I hope that it shows you how easy it is to modify a load balancer once it's been created and added to a Kubernetes cluster. Another thing I just want to show you very quickly is uh, a GitHub uh, repository where we have loads of examples. So I will link this in the YouTube description below. But if you come into here um, under examples, you've got lots and lots of different manifest examples that you can copy. So just in this example here, we've got Nginx with HTTP sticky sessions enabled. There are lots and lots of examples in this GitHub repository for you to go in and uh, copy just to make your life easier and for you to learn from. Thank you very much for watching.